So quick history, um, on May 11th, 2021, City Council amended the noise ordinance to regulate noise in the downtown business district. The previous ordinance did not restrict noise from a business or a residence in the downtown at the time. So after an educational period, uh, the revised ordinance became law on June 15th of 2021. My last update to council occurred at your work session on November 8th last year. At that time, the police department had responded to 50 calls for service concerning noise complaints from downtown businesses. Between November 2022 and today, the police department has responded to an additional 10 noise calls. Since the ordinance revision, the police department has issued nine summonses for noise violations, namely not, uh, loud music from bands or DJs from downtown businesses. I'll bring your attention to the spreadsheet of noise complaints from downtown businesses provided in your council packets. I wanted to highlight a few parts of that spreadsheet. Uh, first is uh, the police department has responded to 60 calls for service uh, related to excessive noise from a downtown business in the past two years. The police department has issued nine summonses in the past two years. Council may remember at my last update during November uh, 2022, eight summonses had been issued and six of the eight had been dismissed in our general district court. Two were pending. Um, of the six dismissed, our judge had determined that the police department should charge the band or the DJ with the violations and not the business manager or the owners. At the time, I consulted our city attorney with this information and Ms. Dooley confirmed the judge's interpretation of our ordinance. Since that determination, the police department has issued three summonses. Uh, two of those summonses were issued to bands and one issued to a DJ. That's my understanding. The judge dismissed those also, but included um, an official warning from the court uh, during that dismissal, um, telling those folks not to come back for additional noise violations. And none of those three have been back to court for violating the ordinance. And um, lastly, from the spreadsheet, um, 33 of the calls for service and six of the summonses issued have occurred at one business located on Caroline Street. So this brings up, brings us to the point where we have to determine the effectiveness of the current ordinance. So I would suggest that the ordinance is effective as written. I, I did the same with the last ordinance, had the same position uh, in November of 2022. So 60 calls for service in the last 700 plus days and 10 calls for service in the last seven months. Uh, from the police department's perspective, my perspective, that's a manageable number. Um, the police department has evolved to the ordinance as written. Originally, we were charging the business managers and or owners with the violations at the time. We've had to evolve with that. Uh, it took a, about a year, year's time for us to learn from taking some summonses to the court to learn uh, how we needed to charge those. So we've learned along the way also. And I think we're, we're continuing to learn, honestly. I recommend the police department continue to enforce the Good Neighbors Ordinance as written through this summer. I'll plan to update council again at a at uh, a meeting this winter as we continue to evaluate the effectiveness of the ordinance. Um, I think we need more time. Um, there are a lot of potential variables to the ordinance. Should, um, should council consider uh, adjusting the ordinance so that we are charging the managers or the businesses or do we continue down this path which, uh, which is currently charging the source of the noise? as the ordinance is currently written. I think that's an option to consider. I just think we need more time. Let's continue to, to move in this direction now. It's been a good tool for the last two years. 
Unfortunately, I don't have raw data of how many calls for service we had the prior two years before 2021 because we created a new um, nature code specifically for this ordinance. And it started gathering that data when we adjusted the ordinance. So I'm not able to easily go back and compare it. But I do believe, because we were living it, I do believe that the calls for service have dropped considerably when it comes to noise uh, from businesses. You may remember we had some considerable issues with noise from businesses on William Street and the bass and, the, and other noise plainly audible was radiating up to three, four, five blocks from the business. That has stopped. That has stopped. And, that, and that's considerable. So that's my perspective when it comes to the ordinance as written. Could we go in other directions? Certainly. I do think we need a little more time to continue to evaluate its true effectiveness. So thank you all for your time. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Madam Mayor. I do, if I could, just also want to highlight the fact that uh, we're also working on some additional public information and we are considering, in fact, we are planning to uh, install some signs um, throughout downtown at uh, appropriate places, just again, to raise awareness that uh, the city is serious about you know, the, the good neighbor policy. So uh, you'll see some of that um, in, in our community at some point. Uh, we'll try not to do that uh, too broadly, but enough to send a message to, to folks that uh, we are taking these issues seriously. Um, just anecdotally, I, I'm in rather constant contact with one of the residents who lodged a lot of noise complaints, uh, and he kind of has given up uh, because he knows that the uh, owner of one of these businesses is uh, essentially ignoring uh, requests to turn the music down and, and seems to not care. Uh, so, so this particular resident has kind of given up, which is sad. Um, I would like to see if we can tighten up the ordinance. Right now it says noise generated by a person or group of people. And I'm wondering if we can change that wording in the ordinance to say something like noise generated by or allowed to continue, you know, for uh, speaking to the manager of the business. Uh, noise generated by or permitted to continue by um, a manager, whatever. I don't know how to do it, but can we expand the responsibility beyond the person that's actually creating the noise to a person who is allowing it to continue? Madam City Attorney, <laughs> am I putting you on the spot? <laughs> well, it's it's um, worth considering. The language I think that um, the judge is probably landing on is our language that says the person operating or controlling a noise source shall be guilty of any violation caused by that source. And our problem um, is not the category of people, the, the sound generated by a person, like the sound of my voice, but the musical um, instruments and electronic audio devices that are plainly audible 100 feet or more from the boundary line of the property on which the sound source is located. So the judge is looking at our ordinance and going, the person operating or controlling that noise source is the person who's guilty of the violation. That's the band, the person who's in charge of the band or running the band sound system. Um, that's not the worst approach to a criminal um, violation of the city code is a person who's actually operating or controlling the noise source is the person who's responsible for it. Um, we can look into it further, but I think that's where he's landing. It, but certainly something we can look into if council wants. Okay. Thank you. And, and if I can just follow up, one of the things that really concerns me is uh, reading the online reviews of the businesses downtown, um, Yelp and some of the other platforms. And you'll frequently encounter complaints about the noise downtown. And that word is getting out across the entire country. Um, and I'm afraid it... Uh, I don't know how much business we're losing uh, because of these reviews. I mean, they have a right to obviously uh, publish their opinions, but there's a reason why they have these opinions, and I'd, I certainly would like to find a way to make downtown quieter. <clears throat> Ms. Devine. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I couldn't agree more with what has been said. Um, again, thank you for bringing us this report, but I just feel like... Um, you know, we've had two years to look at this. It, it's since we're still getting complaints, and and we we are getting, com we're getting complaints even if they're not getting to the police department. 
Um, I just have trouble with, like, <laughs> if you have a pet that is barking, howling, meowing, squawking, or vocalizing, the owner's in violation. I, I don't, I, I'm struggling with, well, it's not my band, so <laughs> how could I be held liable even though I'm the manager? You know, we hold someone's pet responsible, or we hold them responsible for their pet. We hold them responsible for noise at their home. Um, if we had a downtown residence, you know, 16-year-old or 15-year-old blasting music, we would hold the family accountable. The fact that we're not holding business owners accountable astounds me. It simply does. So, um, and again, you could have a band, a different band every time, and so, oh, okay, they're told to turn it down, they play somewhere else. It just doesn't make sense to me. So I would love to tighten it up. I don't know exactly how we do that, but if we're going to hold people responsible for their pets, we should hold business owners <laughs> responsible for their entertainment. Do I remember correctly that there was a request to move the stage or to change the angle or to change the direction? Yes, ma'am. I, I was there when Mr. Broody and I met with uh, a business owner on Caroline Street. We asked him to actually spin the band around. So instead of projecting toward Caroline Street, it'd be projecting kind of towards Sophia, the parking garage. Hasn't happened. Hasn't happened. Can, can I just add that we, you know, we've got development going on downtown. We've got additional residents going on downtown. It is becoming more of an issue. To have, I mean, yes, we wanted to have this vibrant downtown, but we also have asked for a residential downtown, and we need to come to some better um, balance between entertainment and people enjoying their homes. I, I just don't think we're there. So, um, you know, the businesses that are flouting these laws, I, I think, think they are because they've had 33 complaints that are on record. I don't know how many more we've all gotten. Um, and it's just, it's an issue. And again, we, you know, we've got infill development going on. We've got residential development on. It's there's got to be a better, better balance between, um, you know, what we're doing, and, you know, it, it's the loud music at night. Um, it is the motorcycles and vehicles during the day and the evening. When I sleep with my windows open, I'm hearing it all night. And it is becoming an issue. It's something that we hear over and over and over again. And we talk about our city as this wonderful city, which it is. The quality of life, though, suffers when people can't enjoy their homes as well. 